Well, hello and welcome to this uh, exam question on uh, transformation by reflection and rotation and shear. Uh, I got it from an IGCSC uh, past exam question, but I think it's also suitable for additional maths in O level and E, uh, e maths and also for the 11th grade maths in the USA. Now, we're looking for transformation by uh, reflection on the y is equal to x axis uh, on the line y on the on the y axis sorry uh, rotation about about the origin uh, and then or zero zero and then uh, shear transformation with the y axis as the invariant axis here we go right and welcome to this uh, exam question here and we are supposed to answer all this question on this grid. You got no choice. You know you have to do it. I'm afraid. Anyway, so here's our grid again, and the x-axis, the y-axis, all labeled with the numbers in as well. And here we go. And that's it. And for that, you get one more. Then we are supposed to draw in this triangle A, B, C at the uh, those coordinates given. So we've got. Uh, the triangles there, uh, all labeled as well, A, one, A, sorry, A, B, and C. And then we're asked to um, transform this triangle here by reflection on the line Y is equal to X. Now, you can do it one of two, one of two ways. You can either do it by uh, transformation using matrix. So this is the transformation matrix for reflection on the line y is equal to x or you can do it by the conventional method where you swap the for any given coordinate you swap the x and y values so for instance uh, a sub 1 is going to be 1 2 because a is 2 1 so is that 1 2 yeah, and so on so you end up with a triangle there all level as well and note that the position of uh, B and B prime do coincide because B lies on the on the line Y is equal to X and therefore all the points on Y equal to X in this instance do not change, they remain the same. Okay, right. Now next we are supposed to uh, rotate triangle A1, B1, C1 with the center at 0, 0 and anti-clockwise anti-clockwise and you can do it either by pen and paper or pencil and paper and then um, rotate your paper or you can do it by uh, transformation metric the transformation matrix for rotation with center at zero zero and anti-clockwise is zero one minus one zero uh, this is what you get again all labeled so in effect, uh, a sub two, b sub two, c sub two is the image of a sub one, b sub one after reflection on the, sorry, after after transmission by rotation, and um, and then we are asked to find what transmission, um, what the image of a b c has transformed to a sub two, b sub two, c sub two, and what is what type of transformation is that so in effect that is reflection on the y axis because from a2 to y axis is two units and from y axis to a2 on the same line is two units so and from b2 to the y axis is three units and for the y axis to b is also three units now from c2 to the y axis is five minutes and from the y axis to C is also five units, so that's reflection. Okay, and now uh, we are asked what sort of transformation to expect if we use this transformation matrix here. And for this, I hope you watch my last three videos on transformation because uh, this is explained uh, in more detail than there. Anyway, so the unit vector is this one here and because uh, this has changed 
from 0 to minus 1 here, yeah? only this has changed in the unit matrix. Now, that will suggest to me that the transformation matrix will be that for shear with the y axis invariant, okay? Uh, the scale factor is going to be minus 1. Yeah? Okay, so if that, if only that changed, that will have meant uh, a shear transformation uh, with, the y, with the x axis invariant. Okay, now in this case, is the y axis that is invariant and the shear factor is minus 1. So, this is what we get. And I shall try and explain how I got that. And all that labeled again. All right. Now, to explain that a bit more fully, this is what we're given, this one here, that's what we're given. Uh, these points are the gradient values for A, B, and C, respectively. Now, if we multiply 1 times 2 is 2, plus 0 times 1 is 0, so 2 plus 0 is 2. That's for X. Now, for Y, minus 1 times 2 is minus 2, plus 1 times 1. So minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So we end up with these uh, images. So for A, A3 is now this. For B, we transform to B3, we get that. For C, we transform to C3, we get that. Okay? So what we've got now is transformation by shear with the y-axis invariant and scale factor minus one. Now, let me explain. From C to C3 is five units. From the y-axis to C3 is also five units. Now, divide five by five, you get one. Now, because we were transforming southwards, we're going down in the negative, direct, in the negative direction. So the scale factor is not one, but minus one. Similarly, from A, to A3 is 2 units. From the y axis to A3 is also 2 units. Divide 2 by 2, you get 1. And again, because we're transforming southwards, that is minus 1. We're being consistent. And from B to B3 is 3 units. From the y axis to B3 is also 3 units. Divide 3 by 3, we get 1. And because we're transforming southwards, it's minus 1. So, this is transformation by shear uh, with the y-axis invariant and scale factor is minus 1. Now, this is fun here. Now, for the last one, it says um, uh, we want to um, transform from uh, this triangle A3, B3, C3 back to A, B, and C. And it's asking us what the, trans what the transformation is going to be. Now, because we're moving upwards, okay, back to the same position, uh, the scale factor is now 1 and not minus 1. It is now 1, we're going upwards. Okay, so the answer should be uh, 1, 1, as you have here, 1, 1, and 0, 1. That should be the answer. I hope all that made sense, and uh, please subscribe. Sorry, it's been a bit too long, but there you are. And wish you good luck. Bye-bye now. See you. Bye-bye.